Yo, what's up, YouTube? How y'all doing tonight? As you guys know that you've been watching me, my name's Nathan. I'm the owner of Or Loves Plumbing, and I'm doing this live video so I can talk to you guys about, you know, just like more information in the plumbing field, why this is such a great career choice to make, you know, how it's changed my life completely. I got a whole list of different topics that I'm going to go over. I'm going to give you guys all a couple minutes here. I see somebody's joined in. Thanks for checking it out. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you got, man. So some things I'm going to be talking about is like my background in plumbing. It'll be the first thing I go over so that you all have an idea of what I've been through and the amount of training and different licenses that I have to get to the point where I'm at. Talk about what I enjoy most about plumbing, the importance of plumbers, I'm also going to talk about the pay scale that plumbers deal with because it's kind of all over the place. Whether you're working for somebody just starting out, starting your own business, or if you're on the sales side of it, there's such a wide range. Let's see how much time I've dedicated to plumbing. That'll kind of be in my bio. Oh my God, I've got a long list. Like seriously, if I wanted to, I could spend hours on this tonight. That'll kind of depend on you all and who all is asking questions, and the type of questions you guys ask. <clears throat> I can talk about new construction versus service, starting your own business, how you can become a plumber without going to college, which if you or your buddies, if you ever went to school like for two or four or even got a master's degree, you know you come out of school with a massive amount of debt. You don't have to necessarily go that route with plumbing. Talk about vocational schools. And these are the actual schools that you go to to do plumbing. They're all over the place. I've been doing a bunch of research on it because when I was growing up, I didn't, I've didn't. i never heard of a vocational school. No, None of my teachers ever told me about that. Nobody I ever dealt with told me about a vocational school. Everybody said, you got to go to college if you want to be successful. And a big reason why I'm here doing these videos is because that's not the case. To me, personally, I think it's a total sham. It works out for some people, but the whole debt system, as soon as you turn 18, you get right out of school, it's a total joke. I'm also going to talk about the different career choices that you can have as a plumber, because aside from just being a plumber, you can get into sales, you can work with uh, warehouses, you can also become a tool rep. It's like those of you that have heard, yo, what's up, James? Thanks for joining in, man. How you doing? It's my first live, so I'm trying to figure it out, try to watch you guys comment and all that good stuff on the side, and I'll try to keep rambling on, all right? Really appreciate you joining in, man. All right, let's see. Where am I at on here? Do, 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 do. The other thing I want to mention, too, is you know, I'm on YouTube a lot. I watch a lot of, a lot of people, you know, like who talk about money and progressing and doing better for yourself and things like that. And as I've watched those videos, I've heard a lot of these people talk about being a plumber or being an electrician or getting into HVAC because even rich people recognize that it's not a terrible field to get into and they understand the money that's behind it. And just to throw out a couple of names of some of the main people I've heard, if you've ever listened to Patrick Bet David, he talks about it quite a bit. Um, Jay Waller, uh, he's kind of a little more unknown, but he's pretty big in the construction world. Joe Rogan has mentioned it quite a few times about how being a plumber is great. And also everybody's favorite, Andrew Tate. This dude has mentioned it quite a few times. And regardless of what you think about it, for somebody of his caliber to talk about it, to me, is pretty important. What's up, Killer Rob? How you doing, man? Yeah, exactly. Free Tate. There's... <laughs> I'm not, I don't plan on getting too political or anything like that on here, but my boy didn't do it. It's as simple as that. He did it, but we're, <laughs> I'll digress from that point. All right. So let's see, I'm going to go over my background real quick, especially I got a couple of you guys in here. It's good to see you too, man. I know you guys are always commenting on my stuff. I appreciate you hearing that. You know, it's good to see a couple of you guys who are real serious about this. So let me pull some of this stuff up real quick. 
like I said, just bear with me. This is my first live, so I'm learning how to navigate, try to get around this kind of stuff. All right, so I'll give you guys a quick excerpt of my experience and kind of what I've done as a plumber. So at this point in my career, I have over 26,000 hours of on-the-job experience. This is including water lines, sewer, such as storm and sanitary, and also dealing with gas lines. That roughly equates to 10 years in the field doing 50 hours a week. Uh, at this point, I know for a fact I've done more because I've never worked less than 40 hours in a week. And typically I'm working 60, 70, sometimes more. All depends. Did four years in a trade school. The one I went to is called ABC, which is Associated Builders and Contractors. They are actually a nationwide vocational school. So they do plumbing, electrical HVAC. I think they even do boiler classes now, but they have, you know, usually about five or six locations in each state and generally at least one location in each major city. Uh, it's a great school. It's actually rather inexpensive. I got to go for free, luckily, because the company I was working for paid for it. But when I was looking at the numbers, they were, it was 2,500 per year. So you figure four years of school, $8,000. That was if the company I was working for was not a member with them. If they became a member, they would have paid $2,000 a year for me to go to school. I mean, $2,000, you think about what it goes or costs to go to like community college or regular school. I mean, you'll be $40,000, $50,000 in debt by the time you get out with a bachelor's degree. <clears throat> I also got 100 hours of continuing education. So what this is. Because of my license, I have to do continuing education every year. And also the company I used to work for, they would send me uh, to get continuing education hours. So at our supply houses, like the people who sell us materials, they offer classes that teach you an array of things. Anything from like newer plumbing materials coming out or like certain ways, like ones I've taken a lot of boiler classes. So they'll teach you how to install boilers, how to run the piping in a way that's most efficient. There's a lot of classes like that. There's also some business classes. They teach you sales, that kind of stuff. So over the years, I've accumulated about 100 hours. Do, 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 do. Where are we at here? So at this point, I'm a licensed plumbing contractor. There's different levels of licenses and technically three of them. You have a journeyman plumber, you have a master plumber, and then you have a plumbing contractor. Journeyman is once you've had about four years in the field, have gone to trade school, you can then apply to become a journeyman. They give you a nice license. It's really good if you want to work for the unions. Uh, it's about all it is. It just kind of gives you some sort of credibility. Master plumber is a step up above from that. So once you've done, it depends on your state, but you figure about six to eight years in the field. You can then take an even harder test and become a, a master plumber. The plumbing contractor that I am, I had to do five years of consecutive work. I had to have a permit for each year that I pulled through the company. Um, what else did I have? I think that was it. And then I just had to pay a couple fees. I had to take two state tests, so a business and then a plumbing test. And it was like eight hours of testing. A little crazy, but actually wasn't that bad. And the difference between that and the others is I can pull permits with any city that I work in uh, throughout our state, through like Tennessee, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, you know, all the neighboring states, so Ohio here. So I can pull permits with those with my city anywhere in the state to, you know, do any type of plumbing job I need to. So like some of the guys I work with, we do a lot of kitchen and bathroom remodeling where I just do the plumbing on it, but you have to get a permit for it. You know, if they find out you're doing all this plumbing and moving pipes around and not getting permits, uh, homeowners can get hit with a lot of fees. Typically not a good thing. So when you're a journeyman or a master plumber, you can't pull permits, but I can. And I've taken the same test that they all have. I'm also licensed in backflow prevention, which I'm not going to get into that a whole lot. But essentially, I'm equipped and licensed to test and work on safety devices for potable water systems. Generally, it protects the city water. 
I don't do a whole lot of it now, but I used to do a lot of it with the company that I work for. Let's see. Hey, what's up, Rob? I'm just noticing your comment. Yeah, so actually I do a little bit of commercial work as it is. Um, right now it's just me and I have one other full-time guy that works with me and one who's kind of part-time. Not really the best equipped for a commercial. They tend to have larger workloads and bigger things that you're dealing with. I used to do a lot of it with the previous company that I worked at, but now I'd, you know, working like kitchens, small apartment buildings, things like that. But commercial side, pretty light for the most part. But I would like to get into it more because you can charge them more and it's not an unfair practice. Commercial just tends to be more difficult. So you get a higher ticket, better margin. And typically they'll pay you right away. Um, and they don't argue the bill. You know, when I'm dealing with a regular customer, sometimes like, oh, can you give me a discount? You know, what can you do for me? You don't get none of that commercial. It's really nice. All right, James, I see your comment too. So I'm going to move some things around real quick. Thoughts on Roto Rooter? <laughs> oh, man, do you really want to hear my thoughts on that? I don't really have much good things to say about that. Um, so when I first started off, I used to work for Mr. Rooter and I was a sewer cleaner for them. I don't want to say anything too, too mean. Um, you can learn a lot at those companies. From my experience, they're mostly sales. They'll teach you what you need to know. Um, I don't know if they'll pay for your schooling. I know Mr. Rooter, I didn't know about it at the time, but they didn't offer me any type of schooling or to pay for any of that stuff. You will learn how to sell jobs, though. Um, and in my personal opinion, what I found with working with Mr. Reuter, you're paid on commission. You can make a lot of money at those companies, but typically you're selling jobs to people that they don't necessarily need. Me personally, I'm not in that kind of business. I like to give people options, but I'm not a pushy type of salesperson, and I don't like to sell jobs to people that they don't necessarily need. Probably be a good place to start. Um they're going to be high paced. They're, you're going to get most of your pay or higher pay, excuse me, from a company like that. Like you'll be on commission. So you can make a small baseline um, or you could get, I think generally like where I was working at, we were getting 20. If you hit 3,500 a week in sales, you would get 20% of that. If you got above that 3,500 mark, you would get 25% of the sales. And we would have some guys that would do 10,000 a week. And those are usually the top guys. And then what they do is if you're like the top salesman or you get a lot of good, uh, a lot of good reviews through the company, they'll send you the better jobs. And I know plenty of guys between Mr. Rooter, Rotor Rooter. Uh, we have like Ben Franklin out here and some of the other big names. Those guys will make a hundred thousand a year. No problem. And the lowest paid ones that we had would make around 40 or 50,000 a year. They're always going to be hiring them and Mr. Rooter. Me personally, in my opinion, I would say go with a smaller mom and pop company. You'll probably learn a lot more. You won't have to deal with pushy sales tactics, but it's all on you. Just depends on what you want to go with. But, you know, not necessarily for everybody. Definitely not for me. I can never go back and work for a company like that, but I'm not going to tell you to not do it. And also because they're franchise branches. So the branch you work for compared to the one I worked at might be a lot better. It might actually treat their people better or not be as pushy, have better work hours. But, you know, all depends. I always say apply to as many jobs as possible. Feel them out. Maybe go work for a week. See how it is. If you don't like it, tell me every single plumbing company is hiring. doesn't matter who it is. They're all looking for good plumbers and they will pay you. If you're a good plumber, you're going to have no problem making money. So back to the other thing I was talking about. So I was talking about backflow prevention a little bit, protecting water lines, things like that. Um, I've got over 6,000 hours of drain cleaning experience. This goes from doing small sinks, kitchen sinks, bathroom sinks, all the way up to large commercial drain cleaning. Used to run a sewer jet quite a bit. I run the big snakes as well for cutting roots out of lines. Got a lot of time doing that. Um, it's not bad work either. It's dirty, but that's where the money is. Is doing drain cleaning because not necessarily the cleaning itself, but once you televise a sewer and if you find that it's broken, I mean, you're hitting a couple thousand dollars minimum just to do a small repair. <clears throat> so that can be pretty lucrative as well. 
And that's also one of my other videos I talked about. It's a great side hustle to get into. If you want to get into just drain cleaning and doing sewer repairs, it's a good way to keep low margins, make some good money. Also, I've got over 100 hours of isometric design. And what this is, um, when you get to the beginning stage of a project, like if I need to pull a permit for a city for a bathroom that we're either going to add into a house or a commercial property, or maybe we want to move the toilets, turn a tub into a shower, that kind of stuff. I have to draw them an exact layout of the piping with the sizing, venting, all that stuff. So I, I have to do a lot of those drawings every now and again. Um, pretty good thing to have. And I've worked with some people too, where that's all they do. They just do drawings all day and they've got great computer programs for it. You make some pretty good money doing that too. You guys are going to hear me talking about the money aspect a lot. Because to me, at least in my opinion, nobody wants to get into a career that they're not going to make any money at, right? You're not going to become a plumber and playing shit to only make, you know, $15 an hour. We're, I'm not here pitching you guys that. Like, there's so much more money to be made in this field. So you're going to hear me talking about it quite a bit. Aside from the isometric design, I also have over six years of waterproofing and water mitigation experience. So what this is, depending on where you live at, your house might have a basement. We used to dig all the way around the basement, fix all the pipes that run around, the downspouts, the footer tile, all that stuff. So I've got quite a bit of experience doing that. We got companies out here that will do it from the inside. Me personally, don't go along with it doesn't fix the real problem. Um, you know, my experience is all from the outside, digging around the house, replacing all those pipes. If you got a yard where when it rains, if you pull a bunch of water in your yard, I add in yard drains, we can take it away, dry your property out. We put pipes underground, all that kind of stuff. Ton of experience doing that. And finally, one of the last things I have is a confined space certification with over 200 hours of confined space time here in Ohio. It freezes, it gets cold. We put all of our water lines underground, but unlike everybody else where it's warm, our water lines are deep and we do a lot of vaults out here. So you're getting into like this concrete cellar kind of thing underground. Some of them are clean, some of them are dirty, all depends. But I had to spend a lot of time in those, you need special certification to get in there. So that's a lot of what I've dealt with over the years. And that's kind of my background, it, aside from like my experience. And just so you guys also get a, an idea of what I've done. So like I talked to James, I started at Roto-Rooter. I worked there for two years doing drain cleaning, water heaters, toilet installs, you know, that kind of work. We also did sewer digging. That was a big portion of what I did. I left Mr. Rooter after two years. I uh, moved back to my hometown city and I started with a small mom and pop company. Uh, mainly they were waterproofers and we had one plumber that worked there and he trained me, built me up. We had a couple other guys working there. I worked there for six years before I went off full time on my own and been on my own now for a little over a year and a half now. It's been going great. Hmm. Good question, James. I have a couple buddies who are strictly HVAC that deal with that kind of stuff. I don't know. Let's see. They're going to deal with their own permits. So typically HVAC, unless you're dealing with boilers like hydronic or steam heating, they can typically pull all their own permits. Generally a plumber, uh, we don't need to pull permits for them. That's if I think I'm getting your question correctly. Uh, we we don't work together like that where I'm pulling permits for them or they're pulling permits for me. They will be specialized and have their own licenses that they can pull their permits for what they need to. Just like I'm licensed in what I do, I pull permits for what I need to do. But nowadays, I don't think a lot of people are doing hydronic heating. Unless you're doing underground or you see it a lot in Europe now. They do a lot of hydronic heating with boilers. But they pull out their own permits. Usually doesn't affect me at all. And I don't have to deal with them. All right. What is the next thing on the list? So I'm going to run through here. So I gave you guys my background. I said last thing was, you know, I've been working for myself for about a year and a half now. 
it was tough at first. And I'll dive into that a little bit. So I built up a little bit of what I did while I was working at that mom and pop shop. Let's see. Stop here, James. What's up? We need to pull her. Interesting. James, what state are you in? I know me. Uh, I've never had. I mean, I've pulled permits for gas lines. I've never had to do one for an HVAC technician. You're in New York. That's surprising. You're close to me. See, my permit will work over there, too. Are these commercial commercial properties or residential? Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, whenever, when I guess that goes into most of the ones that I do, gas line's already there. I don't deal with a lot where they're adding in furnaces or boilers to new locations where it's not already existing. I've had plenty where, you know, if they're converting over from, let's say, like a, a boiler on the floor to one of the tankless style boilers that you put up on the wall, we'll usually do a gas line conversion. I've never had to pull a permit for it, though. So that's kind of interesting that you guys have to deal with that. Yeah, never. Now, I will say I have had to, like on some of the new construction houses that I've worked in, I mean, I've pulled gas line permits, but I get like a blueprint that tells me where the furnace is going to go. So I guess that kind of goes into what, so that blueprint will tell me like, okay, we got a furnace going in the basement or I got a furnace going into the attic and I'll have to run my gas line for that. But also like one of the guys I work with who does HVAC all day, every day, he'll run his own gas lines and he's never asked me for a permit once. So it makes me wonder too, if there's something that they can get on their license or if Ohio just understands that they're allowed to do that. Cause I know for plumbing, it allows me to do gas, water, sewers. I can do all that stuff, but it's crazy too. Cause they don't even put, I didn't have to answer not one gas test question on, on my test. Kind of wild. I you got me thinking about that. So what do you, um, you in HVAC or you in plumbing, James? Nice. Yeah, so you probably deal with boilers quite a bit up there. You uh, you upstate New York or are you actually down in the New York City? You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea for your company to to hire a plumber either and turn them into a uh, master plumber, like a licensed plumber. Almost all the HVAC companies out here have their own plumber because they do a lot of uh, like water heaters, a ton of water heaters, actually. Almost every HVAC person I work for deals with water heaters. And if they can't pull a permit, which typically they're not allowed to, you have to have a plumber do it. I'll pull the permit for them. And they can do their water heater. Okay. Yeah, so you guys do heaters. Yeah, most of our guys, they'll, uh, they pull all their own permits. Like I said, unless it's a water heater, I've never had to pull a, a permit for any of them. Who else was I going to get it with the HVAC? Oh, yeah. But they should definitely consider be a great business move for them to hire their own plumber in house. Cause yeah, like even all our larger companies, Gorge Inc. And um, oh, I was here. I can't even think of the names right now, but they all have their own in-house plumbers. And it's a great business model too, because once you have your foot in the door with one of the trades, then you kind of, you can offer your customers a full suite of options. So I don't know if you're with the, you must be a smaller company than I'm going to assume at least if they don't have an in-house plumber. But yeah, they should definitely look into that. 
it'd be where you work yourself at, man. Become a plumber and build yourself up at that company, dude. Yeah, small. Co- I kind of figured. Yeah, because all the big companies they they'll have plumbers and HVAC technicians that work hand in hand. I should definitely look into that. Like I said, man, that's where you come in. Start learning some plumbing, which you knows you know easier said than done, obviously, especially if you've never done it. But be a good business move on their part. How long have you been doing the HVAC for? Oh, you're fresh into it, man. Nice, nice. You like it so far? Impressive drain cleaning. All right, man, I see you. That's what I was just talking about. I don't know if you just joined in or you were listening to it a little bit, but, man, drain cleaning is a hot spot for the money. There's not a lot of people doing it. Everybody's afraid of getting dirty or getting a little poo on their hands or whatever, but I'm telling you, as soon you know, if you work for a drain cleaning company, as soon as you have to dig up a sewer, man, that money's flowing. Dude, Mr. Reuter, we used to charge – like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for like a forty foot dig, and you're anywhere from you know six to nine feet deep. Deepest one I've seen though on a residential property is like twelve feet. They had deep ten foot basements, but man, it's dude, the, the money is ridiculous. And think about your material costs. You know, you got an excavator, you got a dump truck, you got gravel or sand, depending on where you're at, and you got pipe and a couple boots. Like, come on, man, it's so. It's such a great, great money maker. James, I'm glad you're liking it, man. And the fact that you just started out, that's good. Yeah, keep working your way up, man. We're all needed. And I'm sure even in that little bit of time that you've been doing it, you've noticed that there's not enough people doing it. Like, I'm sure your company could hire more people, get more technicians in there and completely grow. And it's not enough. All right, I'm about to butcher your name. Yalahula. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, I work on gas lines quite a bit, actually. Um, I've gotten into a little niche market out here where I do a lot of fireplaces. So I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. We've got a lot of older homes, like century homes. Very common out here, especially in some of the areas I work in. And what they've done is they don't burn wood in their fireplaces anymore so they convert them over well i convert them over to a gas burning fireplace i do a ton of that work especially come like fall and winter time we're always adding that in i do a lot of gas lines for pool heaters as well as you know, outdoor grills or not well grills a little bit but um fire pits do a lot of gas lines for that as well people love that having those little accent features but yeah a lot of gas line work. Even at this, uh, like the biggest project I'm doing right now, me and my guys, we're doing a, uh, what do I call it? It's a quad plug. So a four unit building. We ripped out all the old gas lines and completely cut and threaded new gas piping in there. I had over 600 feet of piping everywhere from one inch to half inch. I was, we got it done in three days. It was crazy. Absolutely incredible though. Man. A lot of gas line work. It's easy too. All right. Impressive drain cleaning. All right. So advertising. Yeah, that's a great topic. And thank you for asking that. So actually, I used to use Thumbtack quite a bit. Um, I did use Angie's leads, but I was using it when it was they were it was Home Advisor at the time. And I think Angie's leads bought them. They're kind of one of the same thing. In my personal experience, I did not have the best luck with uh, Home Advisor. Also, Angie's leads. Same thing. I noticed that they were charging me a lot for leads. So I would pay anywhere from like $35 to $50 for a lead. And my success rate on it was maybe 10%. I was probably less than that. Thumbtack, I probably had closer to 45 to 55% success rate on it. But my leads were only costing me $8 to $12. I got a lot of good reviews on there. But then I got to the point where 
word of mouth was spreading and working very well for my company. So I really don't have to do a whole lot of advertising anymore. Um, but I would continue using Thumbtack in my opinion. I don't know what your, what your spend rate is. Like mine used to be a hundred dollars a week and that would generate me, I would get at least like maybe a thousand dollars worth of calls a week based off of that. Some weeks I wouldn't get any, it would just be people asking questions. So it all depends, but Thumbtack in my opinion worked out a lot better than Angie's leads. So, you know, if you want to focus on that, that's great. The other thing, and James, I see your question up here. I'll get to you in two seconds. The best networking, I wouldn't even call it networking, um, but advertising. I joined this group called BNI, BNI, and they are a nationwide, it's like a networking group, essentially. Um, I don't know how much I want to really get into it, but I joined this group in my particular area. There's 18 of us in this group. It cost me $800 a year, right? I've already, if I look at my books for last year, for me being in it for three months, it generated me about 25,000 in sales this year already or close getting to the end of January. I've got about 17,000 in account receivables. So like I've started a lot of bathroom and kitchen jobs with the people in my group. And, you know, we started some of these projects, some are already on the books, but $800 a year. And these people put your name out everywhere. It's by far the best thing that I've done uh, advertising wise. And at some point in the future, I'll do a video on that because what I found is there's almost no plumbers in any of these groups and you're only allowed one. So you can have trade people. Like let's say you have a carpenter, electrician, there might be a financial person. Um, we get people that deal with like nursing homes. We've got, insurance people, both an insurance uh, on the commercial side and insurance on the residential side or like, you know, small person insurance. <clears throat> and you're only allowed one of each of those in the group. So you can't have two plumbers in the group. You can't have two carpenters or, you know, two kitchen remodelers. I get groups. I've had at least five of them within my immediate area that have reached out like, hey, join our group or we don't have a plumber and we want to be able to send you jobs. You know, can you put your information out there? Dude, that's exactly what I want to hear. All right. So James, to get to you, that's an amazing question. Um, honestly, if I could, ideally, I'd love to grow my company, keep it too broad, but as big as I possibly could. I'd say ideally for me, if I could get, Technician wise, if I could have about 20 plumbing technicians, and that's kind of how I feel about it now. And I want to have separate crews. So I want to have drain cleaning crews, then I want to have service plumbers, and then I want to have my commercial plumbers and kind of have a, a full suite. But I just want plumbers. I don't really want to tap into HVAC or electrical. I've got people in my network that I'll just send them that work and they can deal with that. But ideally, at least 20 technicians. So you figure based off of that, I'd have probably about four or five office personnel as well. Uh, probably some people doing quotes, blueprints. So, you know, 25 to 30 person company, I think would be ideal for sure. Also, with that being said, it's extremely difficult finding plumbers. So at the end of the day, I would also be OK with just having a small business where maybe it's only like five of us and a couple office people. Just handling it because with some of the uh, bigger people that I've talked to, have some of the bigger companies, it almost seems like that you, at the end of the day, you make about the same amount of money with a big company as you do a small company. And obviously having a bigger company, it comes with more headaches. I don't know how I necessarily feel about that. I Me mean, personally, I'd rather have a bigger company that I can just push work off on the people and I can just do some behind the scenes things and take breaks when I need to. That's uh, that's where I'd like to be at 20 or 30 person company. I'd be totally cool with that. I don't necessarily feel like I need to franchise it and have it in other States. Um, also ideally with that company, I'd also like to do a lot of behind the scenes things like how I'm talking to you guys on video. If I could get more into the education side of it, 
and getting people involved, whether it be starting vocational programs or going to high schools and teaching these kids like, hey, you don't have to go to college and spend all this money. You can go to a vocational school. You know, you can go to a community college that offers plumbing and electrical courses. I'd almost rather get into a little bit more of that. And I say that because as I found on a, like running plumbing is, it's honestly, it's not easy. It's very taxing. It is difficult because there's so much involved to it. And that's also why I tell people find that niche, like just do drain cleaning or just do water heaters, you know, keep it simple. Personally, me, I'm, and to keep it honest, I'm a little too all over the board. Like I said, I deal with gas lines. I deal with water lines. I deal with sewers and drain cleaning. It's a lot to handle, you know, all the different equipment I need, all the different skills I have to have. And it's one thing for me to be able to handle that load, but to be able to put that on the people and my technicians to have them handle that, it can be pretty taxing. Yeah, so right now I actually, I work out of my garage for the most part. I do not have a shop yet. That would be more, probably if I get like, I'd say two more technicians. Like if I could get two more full-time people at that point, I could probably afford to get a shop. It would either be that or I'd have to raise my plumbing rates up to a, a higher point to where I could afford a shop. But I keep my overhead low. Like I don't buy a lot of material and keep it stored around. Like my garage is for excess material. If I get extra pipes, water lines, things like that but I, I don't keep a lot of extra stuff. It gets burned up pretty quick, especially on this big project I have going on. But um, yeah, no, I'd, I'd like a shop, get a couple like those industrial garages, just keep the vans there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's future stuff for sure. And we actually, um, at my house, we have an attached garage, but we built a, a secondary garage it was most, it was supposed to be for lawn equipment and stuff like that, but it's turned into my plumbing garage. You know, that's my space out there. All right. Do, 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 do. Where did my list go? Really? No, so we're we're at the two apartments right now, the two duplexes. I actually just that one that I did the last video on that brick house. That one's been done for a little bit. The first, the upstairs unit got rented super quick. Like we had people in there, I think maybe a week or two after posting it. I just got the downstairs unit rented out, so we had it posted for a little over two months, and just got somebody in there which we kind of knew going into the holidays, you know, a lot of people aren't moving. They're not looking to change locations. I was just talking to my wife earlier today because I had to go over to that house to help them move in, but kind of like give them keys, get them set up, that kind of stuff. Man, it's one thing after another with that house. I had the, the furnace for that first floor unit went out. So now I got to get my HVAC person over there to replace the furnace. I go over there and it's saying thump, 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 and making all this crazy noise. And it just happened to the second floor unit right after they moved in. Girls call me up. I have no heat. You know, can you help me out? Go over there. I check it out. I couldn't fix it. So I sent my HVAC guy over there. He's like, yeah, it needs to be replaced. The whole motherboard was gone on it. And the, um, I think it's the heat exchanger, if I'm not mistaken. He said it was cracked and falling apart. Yeah, no, not the blower motor. That's what I was hoping it was for this other. That might be the case with this other furnace but i was looking inside at the burner assembly where it goes into like that main chamber and i'm assuming it's because of the thumping around the whole thing's cracked and like shaking apart in there and it's the furnace is 30 years old so i'm like all right i don't want to get this call again to get some heat in these people's units so just replace it um and you can tell me too so my guy who i've worked for a little bit and he's actually in that same bni group i was talking about He's charging me seventeen hundred to replace it, and the unit is about it's like twelve or fourteen hundred square feet. Which honestly, to me, it seemed kind of fair. I'm not; I don't have time to go there and figure out how to replace it myself. But yeah, he's charging me seventeen hundred dollars to do the one, 
this new one. The other one, and this is the nice thing about being in the trades, we're doing a little bit of work for work. So when we had that real bad freeze, he had a water line in his house that froze up. And luckily, it didn't burst on him. It kind of, when we had that thaw, it let loose. But uh, he's having me go over there and do some heat tape and maybe try to find a better way to run that line so it doesn't freeze up. So I'll, I'll get, be able to get a nice discount on that. Yeah, no AC in the house. I'm all, I'm cheap. <laughs> we uh, in all honesty, we probably overpaid a bit for the house, and we had to do quite a bit of work to it. Like we redid the bathrooms, painted everything. We still have to redo the garage on it. So at this point, I don't plan on adding AC. I did all new windows in the house, so that if they need to, they can put AC units in there. But that'd be a future thing. Okay. That's kind of what I thought. Like everybody in the group talks highly of him and says he's affordable. And I had another guy price me before at another property and he wanted like 20, say actually smaller. These are 800 square foot units. And he wanted, it's like 2,800 or three grand to replace the furnace. I'm like, nah, I'm not, to me, that didn't seem right. Cause I've seen like one of the big plumbing supply houses I code go to, they're called famous supply but you might've heard of them. They're, they're all over New York and like all over Ohio, but I think they only wanted like seven or $800 for a furnace. And I'm like, I know you're going to get this done in half a day. So I'm not, I'm not paying you that much. I know better. I'm in sales too, buddy. You know, <laughs> you're not about to overcharge me for a furnace, but we are looking once we get a little bit of cash flow going at this one property, we're going to be looking for a quadplex. That's kind of like the next, next thing on our list. We've I bought a couple properties, but it's market's pretty slow right now. And I'm not, you know, there's a ton of real estate people on the internet that talk about creative financing and finding off market deals and all that. And to be honest with you, I'm not the best at it. It seems like it takes a lot of effort and a lot of behind the scenes work. And I just don't have the time. I mean, you guys see, I'm on here at 930 on a Sunday night doing a live video. My time is <laughs> very, very thin. You know what I mean? No, nah, no, uh, no humidifier there either. Pretty much just straight up furnace. Simple as that. None of the fancy bells and whistles. So hopefully he'll be getting that done in a couple of days. I had to drop him off a couple of space heaters in the unit to keep him from complaining too much, you know. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh, there it goes. Boy, I got like 10 other things on this list. I'm trying to debate on what I get into next. Kind of going over college and all that stuff and vocational schools. I'll talk about that a little bit. It's like when I was growing up, everybody was like, you got to go to college to be successful. You got to go to college. You got to get at least a four or six year degree. I didn't think anything of it. I was not a stellar school person, though. I did not pay attention in class. Pretty much dropped out my junior year of school. Luckily, I got taken in by my grandparents. They helped me out. They put me through college. And I went for four years and got a business degree. And when I got out, I realized, like, there's... Like, what job am I going to get? You know, I was finding jobs that were paying like 8 to $10 an hour for stupid shit. You know, it, it was nothing meaningful. And I just happened, my wife actually sent me the application for working at Mr. Rooter's, a drain cleaner. I'm like, all right, I'm going to check this out. And I immediately fell in love with it, which might be a little crazy because I'm doing drain cleaning. And I'm cleaning out poopy sewers. And yet I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. I'm going to different places every day. I get to travel around the city. You know, we get to go take lunch at some of the cool spots downtown. It was great. And it really got me thinking over the years, like, man, nobody ever told me about like plumbing or electrical or any of that stuff. Any of those schools, like, you know, it exists because obviously it's in your home, but nobody ever pointed me in that direction. And I know a bunch of my friends and other people who I've worked with would have been much better off had we all learned about this in high school, you know, whether they dedicated a class or had some sort of, um, I won't call it their job career day, but you know, they do that in high school where they bring people out and usually it's just college recruiters. 
never had, there were never any plumbers in there or anything talking about that. And I got to looking into it like, okay, well, where are the, and they're called vocational schools. These are going to be the ones where they teach you the trades, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, all that stuff. They're all over the place, everywhere. Like I said, ABC is the one I went to. There's usually one of them in every single major city. We got five of them here in Ohio. Most of the community colleges, like for us, we've got Tri-C. They've got three branches just in Cleveland. Every single one of them offers some sort of vocational program. So you can go to community college, get a, like, let's say business degree. You know, you can go there for business and you can also get a, um, get some time learning trade and getting some plumbing. You won't necessarily get the experience of actual plumbing. You'll get the book experience, which to me is totally different. When I was doing that four year school, they teach you by the book. When you get out in the field, you realize, okay, this is not how it is whatsoever. It's, it's completely different, but the school does help because then you get to identify certain things and you kind of have a general knowledge of how things work, but there's schools all over, you know, and, and right now I'm actually working on building a database uh, for some of the major schools in each of the states. So I can put it out there for people to readily have this information. So you don't really have to look for it. You know what I mean? That's kind of like another, like I was talking about the education goal that I have. That's part of that as well as creating that network where people can get on here and search their state and find schools that do this training. And it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, to an extent it does. If you're in high school, you might have to wait a little bit, but you can pre-plan for it. But even if you're 40 years old and you want to do a career change and get into plumbing or electrical or HVAC, you can still do that. And like I you know, I talk about in all my videos, every single one of these companies is looking for somebody. There is a plethora of jobs out here. And all the older people, it's you have this huge gap because all the older people are getting ready to retire out. And you don't have all these new new people coming in and replacing it. When I was looking at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we're expecting just in plumbing 14 percent year over year growth over the next two years. That's all they've accounted for. So and it's going to get worse because we're not training people. They don't tell you that you can come right out of high school and start off in plumbing or HVAC or any of that starting off making thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year, which might not sound like a lot. But, dude, I started at ten dollars an hour when I started at Mr. Ruger. I wasn't making shit, you know? So you figured at $10 an hour, I was maybe making like 18, 19,000 a year. I was just above the poverty line to where I could not get food stamps. Not that I wanted it, but if I was a little lower, it would have been nice, get some free food, yada, yada. But from that time to when I then moved to Cleveland, after two years, I got my first job at the plumbing company doing the waterproofing. I then started at 15 an hour. By the time I left that company, I was making $32 an hour. So you figure in about a five and a half, six year span, I doubled my income and I got a lot of overtime on top of it too. Like I was making some pretty good money. So by the time I left there, I was making about 60,000 a year. That's not even counting the side work I was doing. You know, almost every day after work, including Saturdays, I would be out there busting my ass, working and building my portfolio of customers and doing jobs here and there. And I would get anywhere from an extra 200 to a thousand dollars a week doing that. And it would just get stashed or go towards reinvesting, like buying new tools, getting my trailer to haul things around. You know what I mean? Going into advertising, you know, I got to pay for insurance, all that stuff. Like to me, if you're mechanical, this is a no brainer. Why go for an office job or something that's going to bore the shit out of you and that you're not going to get any meaning out of and get into something that you could be proud of? You know, I have so many different jobs after I'm putting in a bathroom or redoing water lines in the house and I can stand back and look at like, damn, I'm actually proud of that. Like, look at all this work that me and my team just did. Fix all these people's problems. They're happy. I get to go to different houses on a daily basis. You know, I'm meeting amazing people. I'm learning a lot from them. They're learning from me as well. It's, and they don't teach you none of this stuff. It just, it's, it blows my mind. 
because these schools would not lose anything by teaching you this, but it keeps you out of that debt trap that for whatever reason, our country wants everybody in, which I kind of get from a business standpoint, but it's not good for people. One of these other things, man, we've been on here for an hour. Nice. I want to talk about the other career choices. So James, this also goes for you as well. And anybody else that's been in here watching and, and dropping comments. So you're, you're an HVAC technician right now, right? I'm assuming you're doing service um, or installs. I don't know if you're more on like the new construction side or like the service side, but let's say you get tired of doing that. You could change companies or do it for your company and just strictly get a sales position where you're just going from job to job and selling people furnaces, right? Or boilers or whatever it is. And let's say you don't like that aspect of it. You can go to the warehouses and work there. I, from what I know and the people that I know in the warehouses, they don't make as much money. But if you can get into the sales side at the warehouses where all you're doing is answering the phone and you got, you know, James, you're calling in. OK, so you do the HVAC sales. Nice. So you could do the same thing at the supply houses where I'm sure that you've called in. and You said, hey, Jim, I need, you know, this size furnace with this piping, you know, set it up. I need to deliver to this job. That guy answering that phone gets a cut of those sales, depending on the company he's at. And a lot of them that I've talked to, I mean, they're making minimum of $60,000 a year just answering the phone and doing sales. Like they don't even have to go anywhere and do it. Um, one of the other cool jobs that I found when I go to like these plumbing conventions, like I go to one in Indianapolis called the Wet Show. And you have all these sales reps for like Milwaukee and Rigid. Uh electric eel and all these manufacturers of like sewer jets and different cleaning equipment. And this is, this is what they get paid to do is just sell tools and equipment. And we used to have a guy come to our shop who was, wasn't Milwaukee. It was the rigid rep because we used to buy rigid cameras all the time. And they would come to our shop and showcase us the new products that they have, like the new 200 foot reel with the digital camera that you could record on the, um, on a flash drive or even stream it to your phone. And that's what they did. They drove around to different companies and they're getting a cut of everything that they sell. And when I tell you, these guys pulled up in brand new trucks, they were clean cut, nice clothes, everything, you know, they're making money. This isn't some shammy little job that they're doing. So there's a ton of different things that you can get into. And it, it's crazy. James, out of curiosity, how do you, how do you like just the sales side of it? So are you not, are you not doing any installs yourself or any service work? You're just doing strictly sales. And if so, how do you, how do you like it? And if you don't mind me asking, if you, um, if you want to talk about it at all, do you just get commission or you hourly, like what's your, what's your pay scale like on that? And you don't have to tell me amounts or anything like that. I'm not looking for that kind of information, but I know when I was a Mr. Rooter, the sales guys, they just, you know, they went around and sold sewers and they would get, I think it was three, three percent of anything over 10,000. And then it got split down for the workers. They would get 2% of it. Hourly plus commission, dude, that's nice. Yeah. So you're, you're probably doing all right out there. And as you know, if you've only been in it for where you said since August or, or September, so not even six months, dude, you're at the bottom. There's only up from here and you're doing sales. So you're not beating up on your body. You're not killing yourself out there. And the great thing about it too, is like, if you ever wanted to start your own company, you've now got the sales experience. All you need is technicians. You get a couple of your buddies from your company or anybody that you know, you can get them working for you. Now, if that's a goal of yours, cool. If not, you know, who cares? Not everybody is, is meant to be in business and do all that, but that sales, like even though I'm a plumbing technician, I do service sales is damn near hundred percent of what I do. And it's crazy. Cause I never used to think about it that way till I actually had to go out there and fight for my money, you know? Oh, two years. I got you, but that's cool. You're still, bro. You're still at the beginning of that, man. You've got, you're just going to keep learning and learning, dude. And I'm sure you come across different things all the time different jobs like it's never 
sometimes it's the same, but you know what I mean? It's not always the same. But that sales side of it, man, that's good. I'm glad you're getting a commission out there. Yep, on an everyday. Dude, that's how it is, man. I don't care. I've been doing this for 10 years. Every single day I'm out there, I'm learning something new. It's great. And that's one of the things I love about it. It's not like an office job or something where I'm doing the same monotonous task on a daily basis. Like I'm constantly having to use my brain and actually think and, <laughs> and do stuff. You know, it's not like I'm just going to mush. It's great. My favorite thing, though, is especially now that I'm running my own show, can I get to go all over the city? If I want to stop and have lunch somewhere or go get a beer with one of my buddies in the middle of the day, which I'm not advocating for that. I don't do it on a regular basis, but I at least have that opportunity to do it, right? Get a couple more guys working for me and I'll really be able to do that on the on those busy days, but that's neither here nor there. If you, uh, James, you ever considered starting your own company is that that a goal of yours what do you uh what's your future plans I'm gonna wait for him but the uh one of the final things I'm gonna talk about on this stream and I'm probably gonna kick it off here it's getting kind of late you know Tomorrow's Monday. I got to wake up nice and early, get the week started, you know, get going at it. But uh, so I'm waiting for him. Final thing I'm going to talk about is new construction versus service. So me, majority of my experience is all in new, um, in service for me, not new construction. Let's see. Sales is being in Yeah, dude, you got some big goals, man. I respect that. That's awesome. And it is. I mean, you you are an entrepreneur. I mean, think about the sales. You're getting the most important experience. Could you imagine if you were just like a service technician and you didn't know how to actually talk to customers and understand what their needs and their wants are and how to actually sell a job? You know, I know people who are like that where they they come from that service industry and they're amazing at what they do when it comes to the work and, and fixing people's problems. But they have zero understanding of sales and what it takes to actually get a job sold and understanding what people's needs are. And that's, that's going to take you far. And as you know, with sales, you can you can get out of the trades and get into the financials or banking, you know, or home sales. I mean, there's this the door is all the way open for you at that point, dude. And that's awesome that you've got some big goals with that, too, because that's dude. you're young, too, man. You're going to be set, bro. You are going to be set. And and this is the other thing that I always talk about, too. You're going to have something to fall back on. I started as a plumber. James, you're in the HVAC. No matter where we go in life and what we decide to do, I could decide to take an office job somewhere and get into banking or auto sales or whatever. But guess what? I still have the plumbing skills to fall back on if I ever needed to. Or if I'm like, I don't like this job. I need to make a little bit of money. Let me go out here and fix some toilets, you know, or whatever. Fix some HVAC units. I don't do that. But James, I know that, that that's on your side. But you always have that skill to fall back on. And the sales skill is by far one of the most important. You can keep yourself out of the, the hard work and the, the part that kills your body. So you get a couple people working for you or, you know, a crew of people, whatever it may be, whatever your goals are. And you don't even have to touch the hard stuff. So that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad you're thinking about that. That's good to know. <laughs> My hobbies, man, I don't have time for hobbies. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, man, here we go. My hobbies. Bro, I'm, I'm kind of boring. I'm not going to lie. I'm all... I am a straight up workaholic. Like I will work a hundred hours a week. No problem. But my hobbies, I like to, I like to go to shooting ranges. Um, I love riding my motorcycle. You know, it's probably one of my favorite things in my free time. Ah, oh, man. Anything around the yard, dude. I like, I love building, dude, like landscaping and things like that. Like constantly adding to my house and doing things like that. Like that's kind of, I know it's, work but it's still kind of a hobby like i get a lot of enjoyment out of that um working on cars it's another hobby of mine like 
one of my goals, I'm, I'm trying to save up for an old school car. I want to work on that, have a project, you know, possibly for me and my dad or even just myself. If he doesn't want to get into it, I was I like hiking, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm totally into nature. So when I do have you know, and video games, too, I play a, a little bit of Call of Duty here and there, um, fight night, stuff like that. So when I have a little bit of free time, those are kind of the things I do. I also have a family, you know, I got a wife and I've got a, um, she'll be five years old here soon. My daughter, my little, my little bright star. So those are, that takes up a, a decent amount of time when I'm not out there plumbing. But yeah, that's, those are kind of my hobbies, you know, just a couple things here and there, nothing too major. Like I said, I'm boring, dude, kind of not really, but I'm a workaholic. And I, is another thing I always talk about, man. I love what I do. Don't get that wrong. You know, I talk about plumbing. I might say certain things about it, but that my business is in a sense, my hobby. Like I have such a passion and a love for this that I, sometimes I don't feel like I'd want to do anything else except grow what I'm doing and continue to pursue this path. You know, I'm in love with it. Absolutely. I love what I do hundred percent. I can't tell you the last time that I woke up, it can even be a Sunday if I have to go out and work. I cannot tell you the last time that I woke up and was like, man, I don't feel like going to work today. Like, this sucks. I just don't feel like it. I haven't felt like that in years, dude. Like, this is by far what I think I was meant to do, without a doubt. Always been mechanical, and I just happened to thank God for my wife, man, because she she's the one that found me that job, wasn't even thinking about it. But, yeah, dude, it's fell right into what I love, man. And I honestly, I could do this for the rest of my life. If my, and that's why I want to get more and like more sales, have guys working for me. Cause I know my body's not going to let me do it forever, but I love what I do. Every little bit of it. Appreciate you asking about my hobbies, man. What about you? Tell me about what you like to do, man. Drop your hobbies in. While I, uh, I talk about this last thing, new construction versus service. So like I said, most of my work is all service. I've done very little new construction over the years. So, and for those of you that don't know the difference, service is like I'm going into people's homes or businesses that are already existing and I'm fixing what they have or making alterations to what they have. New construction is more so like, okay, you have a brand new house or a building being built and the plumbing has to be done in that project. It's two completely different areas. Service is by far more difficult. You have to have a lot more knowledge. It's a lot more troubleshooting, a lot more skills and a lot more tools you have to have versus new construction is like, okay, you're given a blueprint. Generally, you have your materials and you're just running pipes to where the blueprints tell you to run them to. It's pretty straightforward. On the working for somebody side, we did a little bit of new construction and I found it to be extremely boring you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Like the house or the business might be different, but you're constantly just running water lines. You're constantly just running sewers and you're constantly just running gas lines. There's not a whole lot of brain work that comes into it. You just look at your thing and figure out where your pipe's going and that's it. On the business side of new construction, I'm staying as far away from it as I possibly can because the new construction, it's all lowest bid work. So what they're going to do is they're going to pick the cheapest company. This is most builders, probably like 90% of them, unless you're getting specialty builders where the person who's having a house built actually wants something like of true quality. They're going to pick the lowest bid work every single time. I'm not out here to do low bid work. I, I don't charge the most. I'm not the cheapest. I'm kind of like right in the middle. And I don't want to be fighting over jobs for a few hundred dollars and losing out on that. And the amount of time that it takes to bid out these jobs, I'm cool. And then some of them too, you have to wait 90, 120, sometimes longer to get paid for these jobs. And sometimes if the deal goes belly up, you don't even get paid. I'm going to tell you right now, I get paid on every single job that I do. There's not one customer, knock on wood, there's not one customer I've ever had to chase down for payment. Sometimes I've had to remind people like, hey, pay your bill, but I don't have to chase down big contractors to get my money. No, you're paying me half up front. 
then you're giving me 30% when my rough is done. And then you're giving me the final once my finish and the inspection is all done. And it's as simple as that. It just takes a whole headache off. Nice. All right, James, you got a few hobbies in there. I see you. That's dope, man. Taking care of your family. That's that's one of the best things you could do in your life, man. I hope my kids have that <laughs> the same principle as you would take care of me when I get older. My daughter's going to get some serious payback when she has to change my diapers. I'm like, you know what you did to me? It's coming back around. Who, um, you say you like watching a lot of business and personal development content. Like who are some of the, uh, the bigger content creators that you watch? I know me personally, like I watch a lot of Patrick, Bet David, um, a little bit of Graham Stephan. Joe Rogan, he's an okay one. Um, I'll watch him every now and again. Who else? And I said Graham Stephan. Jay Waller is one. I don't know if you – Um, no, there's only a couple people in here still, but if you've ever watched, like, Andrew Tate's videos, he's got this buddy named Jay Waller. He owns – it's like Red Iron Construction where they build the, the big steel structures for commercial buildings. Awesome stuff. He's somebody I watch too. He talks a lot of about personal development and that kind of stuff. But yeah, there, there's a lot of good people out there. Finance stuff as well. I don't know if you guys do any stock trading or any of that. I get that's another hobby of mine. I never really talk about. I do a little bit of stock trading, like Bitcoin, stuff like that, and regular index 500 stocks, that kind of thing. Yeah, Zig Ziglar, man. That dude's awesome. I haven't watched his stuff in a while. I actually need to get back on that. I haven't watched him for a minute. I'm not familiar with Bob Proctor, though. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm always out there for, you know, information or whatever, finding good people. Um, who's the one? Robert Kiyosaki? I think it's who I'm thinking of. He did the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which, by the way, if you're – um, because you sound like you're more trying to go towards the business side of things – Dude, it's great. He's uh he's great for like more business side things and kind of understanding how money works. It's a great read. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The Secret. Yeah, I'm not hip to that at all. I gotta check that out. Are they uh you mostly watch on YouTube? Is that kind of where you go for your content? Nice. Yeah, I'm going to check that out then. That'd be one I'm going to throw on my list. Brian, look, man, it's been a little over an hour. James, Yahoo, I appreciate. Oh, I didn't even see your comment up there. All right, I'll, let me answer this one real quick. Let me see what you put on here, man. I totally skipped over you, my bad. Oh, you guys are doing clean outs. Man, I was watching the. Um, what is it like 1-800 clean out or the 1-800 dumpster? They got the green and blue uh, trucks that do clean outs. I actually watched a whole uh, YouTube interview of him. I didn't realize how much money there was in clean outs, but this dude <laughs> makes an absolute killing. Like by far multimillionaire, if not billionaire at this point doing clean outs. That's not a bad gig either. I would actually hire a couple of buddies to do some of that stuff for me. But um. Yeah, at this at this point, it's been a little over an hour. James, I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, 800 got junk. Thank you. Yeah, I know you see those trucks all over the place. Since you're on YouTube, watch that dude's interview, man. It's crazy, like, how he built that company up. Started off with, like, a little pickup truck. Absolutely insane. But, James, thank you for stopping in. I really appreciate you. Impressive drain cleaning. You as well in Yalahulia. Thank you guys for dropping in. And some comments. I think this is great. Um, I'm definitely going to do another one of these here in the future. So stay tuned. I'll be dropping some more content. Uh, if you guys have any ideas or anything, hit me up. Drop me some comments, man. I'd love to talk more about this stuff. But you all have a good night, all right? Peace.